Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome back, folks, to another exciting episode. This is your host, Liz Soria, with the Tax Advisor and Business Coach Success Podcast. Today, I have an amazing, uh, early guest joining me. I'm honored to have him in my show um, by the name of Dr. Jason Ross. And he uh, and I, we're going to be discussing about the psychotherapy for a healthy lifestyle um, and why this really affects business owners and entrepreneurs because after all, behind a company, or as we call it a business, we're humans. So if our minds don't function well, where well, our business are not going to function well along with our relationships. So uh, no further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, uh, Dr. Jason Ross, or Jason, as you like to be called, and can you give us a little bit more profound about your background and your expertise, please? And welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, so I'm a licensed psychotherapist in New York and Florida. I am actually the son of two psychoanalysts. So oh goodness! I, yeah, that's what most people say. I grew up in and around this field, and I was introduced to psychoanalysis probably at a very young age. Uh, so my practice is based around parenting, trauma, wellness, lifestyle, substance abuse, and chronic mental health. And I'm also an actor, writer, and musician. So I've got a little bit of an eclectic background. Interesting. I like that musician, huh? So you love music. That that's what that just kind of releases you from distress? <laughs> it's definitely a great stress reliever and I accomplished one of my bucket list items. Uh, it was actually one of my lifetime bucket list items at the age of 40. Uh, I finally, after many failures, I joined a Beatles tribute band because I made the cut and I played George Harrison for five years. Oh, congratulations, that's incredible, I love it. That's a nice little mix of, uh, of a background there. Now, you're licensed in New York and here in Florida, as you mentioned, and, and correct me here if I'm wrong, uh, Dr. Ross, but you, you really specialize in certain aspects like parenting skills and mental health, and, um, and I guess, uh, uh, you know, when we struggle with changes of our lifestyle, and this is part of what we're going to discuss today, right, how uh, psychotherapy can really help us live a healthier lifestyle, uh, because unfortunately, um, call it belief systems or the way we were brought up, a lot of times that can create certain issues mentally for us that there are limitations. So what kind of things you can share with us uh, from your perspective as a doctor to, to understand what kind of things can we do? Because it's stressful when we you know, run a business. We're always going to deal with problems and not always bad, but things, good things do also happen, right? Uh, but normally it seems like the bad things have more weight than the good things. So what would you suggest out of your expertise that things that we can do to try and live a better life? Great question. Probably the ultimate question. I think people have to keep in mind for wellness as we define it, there's probably five areas that we really have to concentrate on. Uh, physical, emotional, social, spiritual, and intellectual development and management of those areas. If you take a look at people who, you know, quote, got it together, chances are in all those areas, they're either stellar or they're working at it regularly. Both, I should say. So that's really important. I, to your other part of your question, a business is only really as good as the entrepreneur. I agree. Yes. So when we have what we have, uh, what I call being blur in our minds because of all these issues or concerns that we might have, um, having someone like you with your speciality of being a, a psychotherapist, how much can you help us to realize or kind of disconnect out of these? Uh, mental issues uh, because we all have problems and I admit them I have my own and I'm not embarrassed to admit it um, so what kind of techniques or things that you can hopefully share with us today that can really help us kind of disconnect and in, 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 I don't know mentally have a clear vision of you know what we want in life to be happier there's a few ways to do that. I think the term that we hear the most often is mindfulness, right? That seems to be the catchphrase that's thrown around. Correct. You have to take that into, uh, into the reality of your life. So what that means is if people are really mindful, they can take a step back and they can look at themselves with a fair but critical eye. We all have stress. The world has become stressful. Social media, we're bombarded with images tons of negativity 
at some point we have to accept that maybe we're going to take some of this in whether we want to or not. What are you going to do with that? Right. A mindful person is willing to accept that and say, okay, maybe I need to really work a little bit harder at taking care of myself. And ultimately, if I do that, I'm going to take care of the people around me. And that's kind of the job. That's what we're here for, right? To take care of each other. But Come mindfulness on. is the first, you know, first level. It's about being aware, self-awareness. Um, if you ever listen to uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, who's the big uh, yes, media I can. He's, he's one of the ultimate emotional intelligence experts. I Not agree. An admitted terrible student, but what he's good at is the people part, being mindful and being aware of your surroundings. And look at another psychologist, Tony uh, Robbins, the same thing. He's just a very motivational kind of person. And, you know, it's really um, what I have found in my life uh, personally. And, and again, I share some of my things <laughs> along with every time I, I have a, a wonderful you know, discussion with the people that I interview is that it's amazing the power of our mind, how positive, how negative we can really destroy our life. So with that said, what happens when we have these type of, uh, I don't know, call it negative thoughts? I mean, is there any way uh, from your perspective coming to a therapy like you and, and being able to open up ourselves and expressing our thoughts and, 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 and our feelings, uh, does that help really the, the person to, to be able to maybe cope and, and deal with the situation that they might be having? Absolutely. People don't understand, I, I think we forget, again, not being mindful, uh, which is understandable, the brain's the largest organ, if I'm correct. So, thus the mind would have to be. And people take in images, memories, and sometimes trauma, even from an early age. It kind of gets stored in your memory banks, it, it, almost in your DNA. So there comes a point where people have to, you know, what do you do with that, right? Um, right. You have to flush it out of your system, it's a toxin. So talk therapy is really the best way. Unfortunately, the stigma with therapy is that, you know, the people who go are screwed up. <laughs> I would argue the opposite. Um, not going when you need to go is screwed up. That's, that's unhealthy. You know, people will go to the gym, but, you know, talk to a therapist. No, I don't need, you know, I've, I got it. I'm, I'm, I'm good. You know, no, you're, you're not. You're struggling. So the awareness lets us talk about it, it gives us enough uh, impetus to say, you know, maybe I should talk to somebody. And it's a mindset that talking is perfectly normal and healthy, which it is. So and you know, no, I, and I'm glad that you brought that up because I do agree with you that, um, and one other thing is, like you said, it's mental health. That's really what we're talking about. And a lot of times, um, and I don't know if some of the audience might share that with me, but I, I, I'm a firm believer that our family won the best for us our friends, hopefully, and even, you know, our, our partners. But the fact is that they're not trained. They're not professional when it comes to mental issues. Uh, so sometimes we might have a tendency of approaching someone that we already know because we feel comfortable with that person. But it doesn't mean that that person is probably going to give us the best advice because, again, they're not professional. So um, I, I wanted to kind of share that with, with, you know, the whole audience because I think that's very important. Now. It's not, this is the reason why, uh, you know, when we invest in things in business, we need to invest in ourselves, right, in our education, in our skills, but also in, in, in our mental health because the healthier we have a mind, the better we can function and the better in happiness we can have all around us and have clear thoughts, right? Um, so I wanted to bring that up because, like I said, again, I feel like a lot of times we rely on people that we shouldn't, not because they, they mean bad for us, it's just that they're not professionals. They don't have the skills to help us come out of that vicious cycle that we might have when we, all these negative thoughts come in. So someone that comes and approach you, how your therapies work that depends on the kind of problem the person has, like it would it be like, you know, 10 therapies, is it throughout, you know, weekly, monthly, how does that work that way people feel familiar and comfortable if they want to reach out to you and, and, and understand how you can help them, you know, improve their lifestyles and healthier? Well, that's, that's thorough. I think people have to, you know, they get to a point where they're willing enough. And I, I like your point about the fact that, you know, family may care. That's great. But caring is not what it's about. Not enough. And, yeah. And advice itself isn't necessarily enough. 
so from my perspective, it's blending, you know, what we would call traditional therapy, sometimes with coaching. Um, traditional therapy looks at maybe why you're in this position, why you repeat patterns. Coaching takes on more of the mind of, well, this is what you need to do if you want it to change. The catch, which I think the consumers are not aware of, um, and I've seen this, you know, to a, a negative degree sometimes, is that uh, coaches generally are not therapists. No, they're not. Thank they're you not. for sharing that there, with us. There's, yeah, there's some areas that they really can't and should not touch. Mental health has, you know, sometimes deep-rooted pieces. So you have to know, as a therapist, you have to know how far you can go. What's that line? Some people come to me weekly, sometimes it's bi-weekly. Sometimes I have people who come into me for intensive work. They might come in a couple times a week, a couple of hours. I really try to tailor it as to what I think the need is of the person. And also, you know, therapeutically, they always teach you that the, the word is in grad school, we're taught, meet the client where they're at. Well, that is important. So you have to know where they're at and despite where you might want them to be, you have to be careful to balance that. And people are afraid, generally, if they're not going to therapy, they're afraid of what they might uncover. And ultimately, maybe they have good reason. So you have to understand that sometimes you need a gentler approach. Sometimes, it, you know, it's not the time for that. Sometimes it has to be very straightforward. I'm of the mind that, you know, people don't have to spend their entire lives in therapy. Um, you don't have to end up buying a boat for the therapist that, you know, has your name on it at the end of the day. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? And uh, you have to be very willing, open, and the, you know, the other big catchphrase, vulnerability. Uh, right. Here, all the work of a woman named Brene Brown who's a top researcher and a top author. Vulnerability, making yourself available and open to discuss likely what is going to be painful stuff. When you work through that, who knows what you're capable of doing. When people unlock that, they let it go, and they can put it behind them. Instead, if they don't, uh, you know, imagine a knapsack with weights in it. You carry it around everywhere. And you keep dragging and dragging it, right? As much as, and sometimes, you know, what's interesting, and I will show this, uh, is that we sometimes are able to recognize the kind of problems that we have. Some we can, some we cannot, because that's where we need really help. Because <laughs> we might be doing the same thing over and over, but we just don't know why we're doing it. And, and that's kind of sabotaging our future because we don't know. And no one's correcting us in our path and say, hey, this is not the way, you know, you should be doing things. So how, you know, you can improve here it is the solution. Um, and I think what's really important, that, and you touch a, a part that I, I did kind of want to kind of uh, go over it, is our past traumas that somehow all of us, well, uh, I think a lot of people out there, uh, I would dare to say, have probably come from a dysfunctional family, um, whether because they have, you know, certain, you know, substance abuse or even physical, mental. And we don't realize that as we grow and we become adults, we kind of dragging these things with us over our shoulder, right? Yeah. And like you said, some things we might be able to recognize, and others we just don't because we really need therapy to, to help us in the process of someone like you to listen to us and give us, you know, some sort of, um, I would call it not a remedy, but at least some advice of what things we can do and how we can change our mindset to improve our lives. So what I wanted to really touch base with you, um, uh, Jason, was the fact that from your perspective, how do people have problems in their past that really, really affect their present? So in other words, can we really fix or just put a temporary band-aid to these kind of issues from our past? That's what I think lots of people want to know, and I think that's why a lot of people avoid therapy. I think the, the number one BS excuse I get from people is, well, I can't change my past. Well, you know. Can we, can we change our mindset for our past, or is it just a generic kind of thing? Because it's a, I, I, I kind of be going, I, and, and I, obviously my background is, is in numbers and, and taxes, but I've always been a very curious person. And I think, again, the well being and, and how we live a life, and I do work out too, like, I'm a firm believer of working out and exercising and physically being strong. But again, our mind has to be strong and our soul has to be strong. So I think on that trinity, that three connection, it's very important for a good lifestyle. But 
what would you say how when we touch those sections of our brain that maybe they're so invaded into our mind because these are beliefs can they truly be changed or is it just a genetic kind of thing that there's no remedy <laughs> Oh, it can, be, it can be changed. I mean, we do have to change perspective, and, and therapy helps do that as well. What, what we learn as children very often is secret keeping. And secrets over time tend to cause us more harm than good. So what we learn is potentially that, you know, you shouldn't talk about your problems. Families, depending on where we come from, our, you know, our you know, ethnic background, religious background, right. we don't talk about that. We don't want to be seen by the other families and on the street. So the secrets stay in and, well, they're toxic. So unless we get them out, we have to, as you said, we have to carry them. That's our baggage. And I think most people, when they hit a certain point, there become a willingness to say, hey, maybe I should talk about this. Maybe it's time to let the cat out of the bag. That way I don't have to carry it around anymore. So while you can't change your past, you can change your perspective greatly. And that perspective actually is probably the most critical thing you'll ever do. Because if you don't change your perspective on anything, how do you grow? How do you succeed? How do you thrive? Uh, so there's, you know, people who survive lots of difficult things. Uh, the issue is how do you go from surviving to thriving? That's how I, I kind of look at it for people. And sometimes we punish ourselves until we're ready to stop punishing ourselves for something that probably wasn't our fault. Incredible. That's, those, are, those are really profound words, yeah. Um, and you're right. Sometimes, I, and, and, I, and I always, this is, you know, I tell this even to, you know, my close friends that, you know, our parents did the best they could, <laughs> you know, and based on what they knew, they did the best they could. Um, so in a lot of those kind of, um, you know, way of um, thinking were passed on to us. And, uh, and, and it's up to us now as adults to whether we need to have this kind of therapy and, 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 and recognize that we need help uh, to be able to move forward, you know, in, in, in a better lifestyle and, and much healthier. And, and I'm glad that you brought that up at the earlier uh, uh, during the episode, which you said there's a difference between just you know, coaching as we know it, uh, because that's the big trend, right? Everybody needs coaches. We all need mentors. Yes, we do. I have them. And I'm always willing to add more mentors into my life because it just, I can see the results that they're positive. They make me move forward because I don't know it all. And I need that kind of support, right? I need that kind of calling my inner circle, right? That you build people in team, people that really have a good, um, believe in yourself and, and they want to help you, uh, you know, better yourself. So with that said, coaching and then psychotherapy, like you said, there's a difference because you study the mind. In other words, you, you understand what happens inside your brains. A regular, you know, call it business coach or anything else can help you maybe with the strategies, the tactics, or what kind of decisions you need to make even financially. But your expertise come into how our mind works. And that's very important because that is something that you can only have as a doctor because you, that's what the profound you know, subject that you study. So I want to, before we wrap up the, this uh, you know, episode, and um, what kind of tips can you offer anyone that right now might find themselves um, struggling with any related issues and let's say that hopefully it's not the past issue because it's a lot more work involved but something that is happening right now currently in their life what can they do is there any little tips that you can offer whether um, things that can help them whether meditation maybe music I mean are you into those uh, kind of uh, you know things that might help people move forward sure I think someone has to say you know, they have to audit themselves and look at how well do I take care of myself? You know, so we, if we go back to that, you know, physical, emotional, spiritual, social, intellectual, how well do I manage that? So meditation is fabulous. Cutting off, you know, there's a time where, you know, we have to drop the phones and the, the tech and the social media. We have to take a break. People have to be willing and accepting that they need to nurture themselves every which way. It's not... The stigma is that one, so like, you know, if you go to therapy, there's something wrong with you. No, actually you're healthy. 
Men are very much taught even more so that you're weak if you have this. Are they? Really? That's, that's, that's a- absolutely, that's how we, you know, uh, hell, that's part of how we got to this whole Me Too thing. That's, <laughs> that's part of it. Men are taught certain patterns that are not appropriate. They're wrong. Um, and ironically, you see, what the, you see how that plays out later in life for them. Yes. Uh, I think we have to look inward and we have to be ultimately very vulnerable, vulnerable and take a look and get the opinion of the people around us and see what they think. I'm always of the mind you have to take people around you who are better than you at what you do to challenge you. This is the same, it's, but this is the hardest. You know, people will hire a coach and they'll get checked in business, but emotionally, that right. carries the stigma. So my advice to people is always try to put that aside. Really, you know, get books that are self-help that really go to your soul and really support your belief systems and do the work. Go to a therapist. Try a few. You know, get yourself educated on what you can do. Otherwise, what happens? You're probably going to suffer. Despite all the technology we have and all these advancements, we have higher levels of substance abuse, uh, mental health problems, suicide, uh, obesity, diabetes. It should all be lower. And it's not. Something's wrong. And it's the, it's the mindset. And quick question, uh, 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 Jacob, what about when we talk about psychotherapy, uh, not only to the individual, because if, if, if you're in a relationship, okay, and I wanted to ask you, this is, I think, very important before I let you go, wouldn't both need therapy? I mean, that way it really can work in a relationship because if only one person has the therapy but not the other person or the other person is not recognizing or not accepting that they need, wouldn't you recommend that if, you're in, 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 in a relationship that your other partner or your spouse in this case will be coming to therapy with you or, or even separately, but both need therapy, especially when you're sharing your life with someone not being a single person in this case. Well, it's, at some point you're going to either need that both of you go to therapy or you're going to need enough therapy yourself to know that you're going to probably have to leave the relationship. If there's a problem that keeps accumulating that, you know, that's, that's the tough part with it. Generally speaking, now when there's a situation where someone has substance abuse issues, let's say, both people need to do some work. And ultimately, the person who gets healthy, if it's one person, that person usually goes. Wow, that's a yeah. very good point. Wow. And usually most people are afraid, you know, you know, afraid to leave. That's what happens. So I, don't, I was on national TV the other day on Dr. Phil. Oh, congratulations! Really, well, how long ago? I, no, I was watching. I was watching. I was watching oh. with a, with a couple, and uh, Dr. Phil addressed the wife who's staying with a husband she's not okay with, and he basically does his usual. So why haven't you left? You know, in his, right. and she says, "Well, if it doesn't get better, I'm going to leave," and that's the wrong answer with Dr. Phil, and he he went at it. So everybody has to do their work, and if you don't do that you're gonna struggle and you have to make a decision. Do I need to struggle and have pain anymore in my life? It's you know, terrible that people go through trauma and you, know, and you have to say, okay, maybe I don't have to do this anymore. And that's when people get a little more spirituality and they, they wanna take care of themselves. And that's, that's when it gets great. Well, well, you know, Dr. Jason Ross, thank you so much for really, um, you know, giving us such a great, you know, advice and, and, and I hope everyone who's listening and watching, you know, the, the video, they're able to understand that it, it's crucial. I mean, it's, it's our health. I mean, in that, like I said, it's not only physical, right? It's spiritual and it's mental. <laughs> so if we have some problem between those three connections, something's not going to work out very well. So, and by the way, I want to also announce real, real quick uh, before I let you go, Dr. Ross, that we are going to be doing another episode with Dr. Ross because there's another subject that I think is really, really important with what's happening um, right now. And it's, well, it's a situation that has been going on for a long time, but we ignore it uh, uh, and we didn't recognize it as an expansion of media uh, because again, Whatever kind of concerns or issues that we have within our circle of our family, we keep it to ourselves. So now this has been a lot more exposed with media. And what we're going to be talking about in a separate um, actually uh, interview is going to be about substance abuse epidemic. So I would definitely uh, 
have you uh, with that episode too, Dr. Ross, and, and then we're going to be able to discuss a little more profound on that because even business people do have uh, substance abuse issues. And yes. a lot of times because of their loneliness or maybe whatever circumstances they're going through, uh, they have to rely on something else that, again, is not the best thing, but sometimes it does happen. And we like to get a little more tips about you and how we can really hopefully, maybe if there's a way of preventing it or doing something that can help us not to fall into it before it's too late. So Dr. Ross and Jason, again, uh, as you like to be called, thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate your time. And folks, until the next time, this is Liz, your story, your host, and um, wish you a lot of success. So thank you, Jason, for everything, and I will see you in the next episode.